Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. This week we'll work with sensor point data and we'll have three different sessions. And our first session will be mapping point count density. So as an example, here are all the lightning strikes from June 2013 detected from a network of ground-based lightning detector sensors. And what we want to do is map the density of point counts per 100 kilometer square cell. And we can do this in either the polygon world or we can do it in the raster world. So we'll actually do it in both. So basically in the polygon world, what we'll do is use the Create Fishnet tool to make our 100 kilometer wide and 100 kilometer high polygon square. And then we'll use the spatial join tool to determine the number of lightning strikes within each square polygon. And that has an advantage that we can use the symbology of polygons and we can use labeling to label the lightning strike count within each square. The other method we'll use is to convert our lightning strike points into a raster. And the cell size in our raster will be 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers. And that has an advantage that we can use all the symbology associated with raster layers. So here's our MODIS satellite image. And here is the raster layer of point density in terms of lightning strikes per 100 square kilometers for the month of June 2013. Okay, our second session will work with MODIS hotspot data and that is available as points and for each point we have the brightness temperature, we have the pixel size in the scan direction, the pixel size in the track direction, and the acquisition date of that hotspot observation. So for each point, we've got what day it was and what the acquisition time it was, and then whether it was the MODIS sensor on board Aqua or Terra. So what we're going to do is make layers of daily hotspots. So here are all the hotspot data for the Mississippi fire near Big Delta, Alaska. And here are all the hotspots from one day, this example, August 12, 2013. So for each daily hotspot cloud, we want to create a polygon representing hot areas. So we'll use a method kernel density to come up with a density function around our hotspot points for August 12th. And then ultimately, we'll convert the high kernel density pixels into polygons. So here are the polygons representing the hot areas from that one day, August 12th. And our last session, we'll have points representing quantities. So in this case, the example, our depth from the surface of the ocean to the bottom via sonar for these points. And you'll have a thousand sonar points. And we want to interpolate these points to a depth surface. And we'll do that using two interpolation methods. The first one is the inverse distance weighted method. So here's the output from the inverse distance weighted interpolation routine. And then we'll have a second method called Krieging. So here's the output from the Krieging geostatistical model. And basically, we don't have a lot of difference visually. So here's Krieging. Here's the inverse distance weighted method. What we'll do is we'll quantitatively compare our Kreeging estimate compared to our inverse distance weighted estimate by comparing it with the actual depth surface. So when we're all done, we'll have a table. So for each pixel in our actual depth surface, what was the actual depth? And then what was the interpolated estimated value from the IDW procedure and then what was the interpolated estimated depth based on the Krieging method. 
Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, there's this week's information to get you started with our first video session.